on any given morning when you and I come to Mass and offer ourselves to our Lord as he presents us to the Father, what happens? In return, he gives himself to us. And only I know how small and mean and miserable and selfish I am, the gift of me. No wonder the church cries out, O oh, admirable commercium, O oh, wonderful exchange. In return for me, I receive into my soul the all-holy, all-pure, all-loving God before whom the angels veil their faces. When John Henry Newman in his Oxford days, was thinking of joining the church. Word got out among his friends, and they tried so hard to dissuade him. They said, if you become a Catholic, you can never set foot on this campus again, where you are so loved. He said, I know, but I must become a Catholic. They said to him, do you realize with your genius for friendship, you will lose all your friends. None of us will ever speak to you again. He said, I know. I know very well. But I must become a Catholic. Finally, they said to him, Do you realize that if you take this step, you will lose your income, 75,000 a year? He looked up at them and said, 75,000 a year. What is that to one Holy Communion? Because, my dear friends, one Holy Communion is enough to make a saint. When the Lord comes to you and me, he communicates all of his loveliness to us so that we may use it and be a witness to him in the darkness of this world. Our God descends to our level in order to lift us up to his so that we will become what he is. And he is love. So that we are to be changed into love. Now love is not something vague or ethereal or intangible. St. Paul analyzes it so clearly in his 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. It feels no envy. It is never perverse or proud. It does not brood over an injury. It takes no pleasure in wrongdoing, but it rejoices at the victory of truth. It sustains, it hopes, it endures to the end. This is a description of our Lord. It's a description of you and me. How patient are you? Oh, of course, you're patient, you're, you're civilized, you're, you're disciplined. But is your patience something that is limited and calculated? My dear friend, that is sheer, unadulterated paganism. The pagans behave like that. You and I must have the patience of our Lord, who was lied about, treated unjustly, spat upon, led to his death without opening his mouth. And he communicates that patience to you and to me in Holy Communion. Do we use it? Or is that patience of the Lord there in the depth of your being and mine, unused. And how kind are we? Oh yes, we are kind to certain people. Others we ignore. But our kindness depends on our health, or on our mood, or on the time of day. In the morning early, before coffee, we are not too kind. So do the pagans behave. Ours must be the kindness of Christ, who was kind to sinners who hated him, 
who was kind to children who can be so exasperating, kind to their mothers who can be unreasonable, kind to the sick who can be so demanding. He was always kind. St. Vincent de Paul gives one formula for sanctity. Be kind, be kind, and you'll be a saint. That sounds easy. Oh, my dear friend, to be kind to the stupid and the arrogant and the proud and the selfish and the ungrateful, to those who squander my kindness and never say thank you and come back for more, to be kind to them, I need to be dead to myself and alive to the Lord. My dear friend, the secret is to keep our eyes riveted on Christ. We will change and we will become like him and we will never know it. We are not supposed to know it. He will know it and the Father will be given glory. Your great American writer, Nathaniel Hawthorne, tells the lovely story of the boy who lived in a village. And across from the village was the mountain in which he saw so clearly the features of a human being. And he was always looking at the mountain, wondering whose face it was. He looked at everyone in the village, but no one resembled the face in the mountain. Whenever a stranger came to town, he ran up and looked at them, but they didn't resemble the face in the mountain. Finally, the story ends by telling us that as the boy grew into manhood, he himself became the face in the mountain. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you and I gazed at our Lord so long and so lovingly that people could say of us, as they said of Peter, Thou also art with Jesus of Nazareth, thy very speech betrays thee. Well, this is our prayer, that at the end of our days on this earth, we may be changed truly into the God whose name is love. God bless you. Thank you.